Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Hobbyist Now, your one-stop shop. For all things nerdy and dirty. That's right. That's right. I'm Claudian. Of course, this is Nick the Great. We ask that you don't forget to like, share, and uh, subscribe if you like what you see and hear. Also, leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. We're also on Spotify. Link is in the bio. All right. All right. We should have a really exciting episode. So we're going to first start with some news. But first, again, we got to do a little side side step and talk about so far the one of the greatest shows ever so far the last of us um so episode two had already come out and we both nick and i both seen it and um let's start with with you nick what, what was your thoughts on this episode i mean the episode was phenomenal um there's not really much to say about it other than it was like perfect uh you know shot for shot video game it was great yeah um i i did too see it as well and um the well wasn't well very different it veered very different from the game but um it's phenomenal though like it was like superb like excellent like even just as a show itself it it was actually if they keep this going it'll be this might be the best show ever like ever conceived honestly like so i'm really excited about it um but i was a little worried i had a little i was kind of a little nervous of what they're going to do with uh um, Pedro Patel, uh, Pedro um, Pascal. Pascal's uh, character, but uh, Joel, but actually he's actually kicking ass. So I'm really stoked to see that one. So they they did do little differences and stuff, but you know it is what it is. It's 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 a live adaptation, so it's, you're always gonna have that. But yeah, no, it was phenomenal. And the what do you think of the clickers? They look great, right? Oh like, yeah, phenomenal. Like so. Can't wait for more of this. Uh, I really can't wait to see the blowbirds, the blow, uh, blow, the bloaters, bloaters. Yeah, I can't wait to see that when that happens. Oh God, I remember that. Oh, the pain, in the ass, in the uh, at the middle school or whatever. Yeah, in the uh, when he comes off the bleachers. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're gonna now go actually back to our news though, and uh, yeah, so so in uh, 2019, Amazon released uh, the first season of The Boys, based on uh, you know Garth Ennis and uh, Derek Robertson's comic book series. It's immediate popularity, um, bolstered by its shocking uh, and gnarly violence, uh, showed that the mainstream audience had an actual appetite for R-rated uh, superhero content. Well, two years later, the uh, streaming platform um, unleashed Invincible, an animated, animated adaptation of Robert Kurtman's comic um, from The Walking Dead fame, with a, a shocking series opener, and the show quickly found its fans, who uh, feverishly demanded another season for the for its bloody conclusion. Well, uh, the Invisible season two will actually premiere on Amazon Prime in late 2023, and it's been officially announced. Uh, there is actually no exact date yet, and but there's been a trailer that's been released. So yeah, um, for those who were fans of that, um, we're really uh. We're really waiting, aren't we, for this new season? Uh, speaking of kind of like that violent violence, like in uh, in unusual places. Um, well, uh, ready, ready or uh, naughty or niceless, because another violent night is actually um, apparently on the way. Um, violent night director Tommy uh, Rukula uh, said in a interview that with the Warp that he's actually working on a sequel to the Sleeper Christmas hit which will also um, be written by returning duo Pat Casey and uh, Josh Miller. Um, we're taking, we're talking about it and we're just making deals with getting everything in order. Um, Rukula said, don't put your cookies out uh, just yet. However, the director added that, uh, added that um, we have time to really crack the script and figure out the story. And, we um, have some ideas, me and Pat and Josh and the producers. We've been uh, talking about where we want it, where we want to take it to, and um, what we want to see. Uh, more, more actual film and uh, television news. Um, the new uh, Peacock mystery series Poker Face premiered on January 26. An executive producer, Ryan Johnson, actually revealed uh, which classic video games 
helped him inspire the show and his career in general. Uh, here are the list of the games uh, that he shared with, with um, I believe this was IGN. Um, so Zork, uh, The Great Underground Empire, uh, 1980. Planetfall, uh, 1983. Uh, Deadline, 1982. Uh, the Colonel's uh, Bequest, a uh, Laura Bow mystery, 1989. And a more recent game that many people will know, uh, L.A. Noir, in 2011. In an actual, another interview, uh, Johnson also said that um, I'm making the next Knives Out movie next. Um, I've got a big cloud of ideas, but it hasn't all snapped into focus yet. It's exciting, though it's uh, very, very different from this one. That's what I'm excited about said Ryan Johnson as well. Some um some news with uh Hulu and um apparently um Hulu has ended its relationship with uh Justin Rowland and um he's um all resigned actually from squashed games and on Wednesday uh Hulu has announced that it will no longer be working with Rowland uh who was a co co creator and voice actor for the streaming platform comedy um, Solar Opposites, um, as well as executive producer and voice actor of um, Koala Man. Um, we've ended our association with uh, Justin Rowland in uh, the uh, said uh, 20th television animation and Hulu Originals. Um, as previously reported, Rollins was actually charged in May of 2020 with uh, one felony count of domestic battery with a uh, uh, corporate in, uh, injury, and one felony count of false imprisonment um, by menace, uh, violence, fraud, and or uh, uh, deceit. Uh, the charges were filed by an anonymous Jane Doe, who alleged that uh, the incident in question happened actually in January of 2020. Roland pleaded not guilty uh, to its charge later that year. A number of pretrial hearings have already been held with the case planned uh, to reconvene actually on April 22nd, uh, 20, uh, well, 27th, according to NBC News, uh, which first broke the news um, of the uh, charges. Roland actually uh, voices the two characters from um, Rick and Morty, so it's uh, currently unclear how that will be handled. Um, according to the uh, Hollywood Reporter, there are plans to uh, recast those roles. The outlet also reports that the fellow co-creator uh, Dan Harmon will now serve as sole showrunner of the hit series, which is still working its way through the mammoth 70-episode order uh, to get its uh, that it got in uh, 2018. That's a lot. Um, well, we got actually um, some more news, lighter news this time. Um, for those who are Simpsons fans, um, so in 2003, Simpsons Hit and Run um, has become actually the, a cult classic for Simpsons uh, fans with uh, some even considering it to be uh, the best non-GTA game ever made. Those fans um, have been um, cl uh, clamming for, for the game to uh, return to a modern console. So seeing that the game's official soundtrack randomly just uploaded to multiple streaming services um, has raised hopes. Um, has raised hopes. So the full, the full 54 um, song soundtrack, which comes out to about two hours and 15 minutes in total, suddenly appeared on both Spotify and Apple Music over the weekend. What's more than more, the music um, was uploaded to the official Simpsons account which uh, makes the sudden addition all the more interesting. The Simpsons uh, Hit and Run, um, for those who don't know, was a uh, sandbox-style game that was uh, released for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, the, P the PC in uh, 2003. The game follows multiple characters from the iconic uh, animated uh, series across um, its seven uh, chapters, including four of the five Simpsons um, family members, sorry, uh, Maggie. Uh, speculations about a potential Simpsons hit and run return started in in August of 2021, when the Simpsons writer Matt um, Selman uh, expressed his support 
for the game's return in an interview with IGN. Selman did try uh, to temper expectations to the interview, however, saying that the idea would require a uh, combination of corporate of corporate octopus trying to make that happen. Um, interesting uh, quote there, but so in, in um, more news uh, back to speaking of gaming, but Obsidian uh, Entertainment CEO uh, Fergus um, Eckhart um, said that he liked to actually create another Fallout game before he retires. In an interview with uh, Game Press, uh, Eckhart was actually asked whether a new Fallout game would be possible under Obsidian, who developed uh, Fallout New Vegas. I would love to make another Fallout before I retire. I don't know when that is. I don't have a date on my uh, re on my retirement, Eckhart explained. He continued, it's funny. Um, you can say I'm already 52 or you can own or only 52. It's one of those two depending on the day. My hope is that it'll happen, but we'll have to wait and see. Back in October, Eckhart um, said he'd like to create another Fallout game. The main uh, question wasn't whether Obsidian Entertainment would make one, but when will they have the opportunity, if the opportunity arrives to do it. Currently, Obsidian is working on a, a Void and the Outer Worlds um, 2, which so far don't have release windows yet now we're going to move to uh nick and his uh figures all right so for all these figures they will be released in march of this year so our first one uh mediacom toy mafex uh number 172 deadpool x-force version that's the one with the red eyes he's gray uh he'll run you about 67 57 he's an articulate figure he's not a statue and then we run into the 3-0 Voltron Defender of the Universe, Robo Michi uh, action figure. Uh, he's much more pricey, but he's also looks to be a much larger figure in the tone of like uh, the old Megazord figures, probably like a foot or so. Uh, he'll run you about 268.75. Then we go over to a little bit different of a figure. Um, Square Enix Final Fantasy VII Remake. Play Arts Kai Cloud Strife. Um, and you'll see why I said different when you get to see the image. Uh, he'll run you about 136.68 is all pretty much Square Enix figures and anything will run you about a hundred plus dollars. <laughs> uh, and then we move on to 3-0 Shin Ultraman, a uh, six inch Ultraman action figure. Uh, he will run you about 61.43, crazy amounts of articulation, toes, foot, uh, all that stuff. So just a lot there. Um, and then we move on back to news. Uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake. Capcom offered a new peek at an old location in the Resident Evil 4 remake with new images showing off Salazar Castle. The screenshots show notable locations Leon and Ashley will visit while in Velobos. Uh, in addition, people took to Twitter after the initial share to offer screenshots from the original game to show some comparisons of how things may have changed. Uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake will come out on PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, uh, the PC for Steam, and on March 24th, 2023, so really soon. Uh, there will also be PSVR 2 support for the PS5. Mm. Uh, so, some fun news for manga. Uh, the first new Shonen Jump manga series of 2023 appeared as... Shingashi X uh, is here. The first chapter launched on January 22nd, 2023. As a typical uh, for a series showing up weekly, Manga Plus and Viz Media are localizing new installments as they arrive. Jingashi X is the latest work from mangaka Norihiko Kuzurano, uh, whose past series include Automat Automaton, uh, Chitiaiti, uh, Ryoku, and Maho Gushin Roma. Uh, the manga begins with a teaser suggesting the due to the world's balance being broken, darkness took over. However, there is still hope. And it, it then introduces Daoshi, an apprentice monk hunting Jingashi alongside allies Chioan and Julie uh, outside of Shinxian uh, village. 
There are many expectations for Zing Hao, uh, as his father is a renowned Daoshi master monk, Longo Zhaoshi. Uh, that was a mouthful. The first chapter follows as the three young men take uh, on their final test to become a Daoshi. However, the path to their goal isn't clear or guaranteed. Uh, Jingashi X is available on uh, Shonen Jump, uh, with the new manga's second chapter appearing, well, as of today's recording, January 29th, 2023. Hmm. There will be a fun game. Uh, this is actually right up Claudian's alley, yeah. uh, as far as the main topic of this. Um, maybe not so much the game. I don't. Are you really even into mobile games like that? Mobiles, no. I because mostly all of them are gotchus, anyways. Yeah. And so, speaking of which, that's exactly what this, this is. is. It's yeah. a gotcha game. Um, as of this, uh. Tw- the 20th of December, 2022, Goblin Slayer Endless Hunting is now available worldwide through the G123 platform. It's basically an idle browser game where you let loose the Goblin Slayer and add up uh, to two members to your party and just kind of go at go to town, kill goblins, level up. I'll share a image of what it actually looks like, but it looks like every other gotcha That's game, good, except for you're just grinding, so... That'll be fun. Grinding and paying real world money. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to our, as you can tell by looking at our table, our main topic uh, for the night. Which crush. Would be, yeah. Crush. Crush from Finding Nemo. Yes. Yeah. Uh, our turtle soup for the night, actually. Turtle soup. Yeah. That too. Uh, our recipes. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we're going to actually start off with Claudian. Yep. Get your uh, nostalgia hats on because we're going to go for a ride. Um, all right. So. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or known as uh, the TMNT, is a uh, American media franchise created by uh, the comic book artist Kevin Eastman and Peter Lard. It uh, features Leonardo, uh, Michelangelo, uh, Donatello, Ralph, and Raphael, uh, four anamorphic turtle brothers, uh, named after Italian Renaissance artists trained in ninjutsu. Um, who fight evil in New York City. Supporting characters include uh, include uh, the turtles' uh, rat sensei, uh, Splinter, their human friend, um, April O'Neil, and, of course, Casey Jones. And uh, some of the enemies uh, that they deal with are such as Baxter uh, Stockman, Krong, and uh, their arch enemy, the Shredder. The franchise uh, began as a comic book um as a comic book, in fact, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, which Eastman and Laird uh, conceived as a uh, parody, in fact, of a of elements popular in superhero comics at the time. The first issue was uh, published in 1984 by Eastman and Laird's uh, company, Mirage Studios, and was a, a surprise success. In 1987, Eastman and Laird uh, licensed the characters to Playmates Toys, which developed a line of Turtle action figures, um, which about, you know, a minor 1.1 billion of turtle toys have been sold from 1988 to 1992. It's just a, just, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing to, you know, brush about, but making them the third best selling toy figures ever at the time. In fact, uh, the action figures uh, were promoted uh, with an animated series, which uh, premiered in 1987 and ran from Almost in a decade, uh, three live action films were released. Uh, the first released in 1990 um, became the highest grossing independent film actually up to that point. Numerous video games have also been released, including several developed by Konami. In some of European res, uh, regions, the uh, franchise was actually titled Teenage uh, Mutant Hero Turtles uh, due to the connotation of the word uh, ninja. Eastman sold its share of uh, the Turtles franchise to Laird in 2000, and in 2009, uh, Laird sold it to Viacom, now Paramount Global. Viacom commissioned uh, commissioned a, a new actual comic book series, two live action films, and a new animated series. So we're going to go to the the 1983 to 1986 area of the comic book. So. Concepts and first comics. Cover cover of the uh, Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, which was May 1984. The comic book authors uh, authors um, Kevin Eastman and Peter Lair 
met in uh, Massachusetts and began working on illustrations together. In 1983, Laird invited Eastman uh, to move in with him in Dover, uh, New, uh, New Hampshire. That November, Eastman drew a masked turtle standing on its hind legs, armed with uh, nunchucks. Laird added uh, the words mutant, <laughs> teenage mutant. The concept, um, concept uh, parodied uh, several elements popular in superhero comics at the time. Uh, for example, the teenagers of uh, the new teen uh, t titans, the mutants of Unca uncanny X-Men and the uh, ninjas of uh, Daredevil combined with uh, the comic traditions of funny animals such as Howard the Duck. Eastman and uh, Laird developed uh, the concept into a comic book. Uh, they considered they considered giving the uh, tur uh, turtles Japanese names, but instead named them after the Italian Renaissance artist um, Leonardo. Raphael, Donatello, and uh, Michelangelo, which um, Laird said felt just quite just quirky enough uh, to fit in the concept. They developed the backstory, uh, referencing further elements actually from none other than Daredevil. Like a Daredevil, the turtles are altered by radioactive materials, and uh, their sensei, sensei uh, Splinter, um, who is a play on the Daredevil sensei, sticks the blind. A martial artist. In uh, March 1984, Eastman and Laird found founded a comic book company, Mirage Studios, in their home. Uh, using money from an actual tax refund and a loan from Eastman's uncle, they uh, printed copies of the uh, first issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and advertised it in a comic book buyer's guide magazine. This attracted actual interest of comic book distributors and all 3,000 copies were in fact sold in a few weeks. Uh, sales of further issues continued to climb from there on. So, 1987 to 1989, toys, animation, and video games. Co-creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. In 1987, Eastman and Laird licensed Turtles to Playmates Toys. Between 88 and 97, Playmates produced Turtles toys, including around 400 figures and dozens of vehicles and play sets. About $1.1 billion of uh, dollars of Turtles toys were sold in four years, making them the third best-selling toys ever behind G.I. Joe and Star Wars. Influenced by six, uh, the success of He-Man, G.I. Joe, and Transformers, which had promoted toy lines with the animated uh, series, Playmates worked with the animation studio Murakami uh, Wolf Sw uh, Swayson, uh, to produce the first Turtles animated series, which premiered in 1987 and ran for almost a decade. Introduced Turtles elements such as their colored masks, catchphrases, love of pizza, and uh, distinct personalities. To make it acceptable to parents and television networks, the series had to uh, lighten the tone uh, than the comics, with no expletives, less violence, and less threatening villains. In the United Kingdom... Uh, and some other European regions, the franchise was renamed Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles for the violent connotations of the word ninja. The first Turtles video game was released for the Nintendo uh, Entertainment System, the NES, in 1989, the first of the several developed by the Japanese company Konami. It sold approximately 4 million copies, making it one of the best-selling NES games in response to concerns that the series was drifting away from its original or its origins. Eastman and Laird published an editorial in the comic in 1989, writing, We've allowed Wacky Side to happen. Enjoy it very much, all the while, though, we've kept the originals very much ours. Eastman later said that there was some stuff that he wished he had said or hadn't said yes to, and Laird wrote of his dislike of the softer tone of the animated series. 1990s first film franchises, uh, expansion, and commercial peak. Uh, the early 90s saw the commercial peak of the franchise. The first Turtles film was released in 1990, featuring costume design by Zim Henson, Henson's Creature Shop. It was based more closely on the comic than the animated series with a darker tone. It was the fourth highest grossing film of 1990 and the highest grossing independent film at that point, earning more than $200 million worldwide. A sequel 
Uh, the Secret of the Ooze was released following year with a rush production, lighter tone. It received weaker reviews and much less successful at the box office. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 1993 was aimed for the Japanese market, the largest foreign market of the U.S. films at the time, but failed to see release there and saw weaker reviews and sales. In 1990, a stage musical of all things... Uh, coming out of their shells, featuring the Turtles as a rock band, played 40 shows across the United States. The music uh, musical was sponsored by Pizza Hut and promoted with an appearance on the Oprah Winfrey Show. A soundtrack album and a VHS were released. After the animated series ended, a live-action television series, Ninja Turtles, The Next Mutation, was created in 1997 with Saban Entertainment. It introduced a fifth female turtle, Venus de Milo. The series was canceled after one season. Later, uh, Laird later said it was the only licensed Turtles project he truly regrets. Uh, the 2000 sale of uh, to Nickelodeon and further series, Eastman sold his uh, shares of the Turtles uh, franchise to Laird in 2000. In 2003, Four Kids Entertainment launched a new animated Turtles series which ran for seven seasons, concluding with a television film from the Turtles Forever in 2009. Laird had a role in this in the production, creating a closer adaptation to the original comic. A computer-animated Turtles film, TMNT, was released in 2007 and $95 million at the box office. On October 21, 2009, it was announced that Laird had sold the franchise to Viacom. He said that he had tired of working on the turtles writing i am no longer a guy who carries a sketchbook around with him and draws in it every chance he gets in 2011 idw publishing uh launched a new turtles comic series with eastman as co-writer and illustrator a third animated series premiered in 2012 on nickelodeon and ran for five seasons before ending in 2017 a fourth live action uh turtles film uh produced by platinum new dunes nickelodeon movies and paramount pictures directed by just uh jonathan um uh, laborson and produced by michael bay was released on august 8th 2014 it it received actually negative reviews but was a box office success a sequel out of the shadows directed by dave green was released in june of 2016 a, a fourth animated series uh, rise of the uh, teenage mutant ninja turtles premiered in 2008 and ran for two seasons. A film sequel to the series released in 2022 on the streaming service Netflix. Two additional films are in development, uh, Mutant Mayhem, produced by Seth Rogen, and a uh, live uh, action reboot uh, produced by Bay. Um, so some of the characters that we often deal with with the comics and the films. In most versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, are are actually created when a four baby turtles are exposed to radioactive ooze, transform them into humanoids. They fight evil in New York City where they uh, reside in the sewers. Well, here are some of the cure of the characters. So Leonardo is actually the the most disciplined and skilled turtle, an expert swordsman. He wields a, a two katana, and wears a blue bandana. Raphael, uh, the strongest and most reckless the turtle wears a red bandana and uses a pair of uh, size. Uh, Don Donatello uses his intelligence to invent gadgets and vehicles. Uh, he gears, uh, he wears a purple mask and uh, uses a bow staff. Um, Michelangelo is a is the least disciplined and the most love fun lo fun loving turtle. He is usually portrayed as the fastest and most agile. He wears an orange bandana and uses nunchucks. Uh, Splinter, who is the uh, mutant rat, who is uh, the wise adoptive father of the turtles, and teaches them ninjutsu. In some versions, he, he was once uh, the pet rat of ninja master Hamato uh, Yoshi. In others, he's actually a mutated Yoshi. Uh, the turtles are um, ass assisted by April O'Neil, who is uh, v variously de depicted as either a news reporter, lab assistant, or g a genius computer programmer. In most versions, she is pursued by and er, pursued romantically by 
Case jo- Casey Jones, a uh, hockey mask wearing vigilante who usually becomes an ally to the Turtles. The Turtles' uh, nemesis is actually Shredder, who uh, leads the criminal ninja clan known as the Foot. His real, den- his real identity is usually uh, the ninja um, Okosaku. In in most versions, the uh, Shredder's second in command is uh, Kiraga, a skilled um, martial artist. In some versions, she is uh, Shredder's daughter. Uh, Shredder's allies are Baxter uh, Stockman, a mad scientist, and Krong, a alien warlord. Krong um, was introduced in the original anime series and was inspired by Ultima Race from the comics. Also created uh, for the series was Shredder's uh, buffoonish henchman, a bebop and rock steady, a um, mutant uh, rhino and a warhog. Uh, so comics, um, the Mirage Studios uh, from 1984 to 2014, Eastman and um, Lard's, Laird's um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, premiered in May 1984 at a comic book convention held actually at a local Sheridan Hotel in Portsmouth, Portsmouth, uh, New, New Hampshire. It was it was published by their company, Mirage Studios, in an oversized magazine style format using black and white um, artwork on cheap newspaper, a limited to a print run of 3,000 copies. It was initially intended as a one-shot, but due to its popularity, be- became an ongoing series. After publication was temporarily assumed by Image Comics for the third volume, Laird, by then the sole owner of the franchise, and Lawson relaunched the main series at Mirage with a fourth volume in 2001 following the sale of the franchise to Nickelodeon in late 2009. Laird retained the right to continue Mirage series, but no issues have been released since the release of number 32 in 2014, and Mirage Studios was wound down in 2021. All to... All total, the main Mirage series lasted for 129 issues, spanning four separate volumes, 62, 13, 23, and 32 issues, respectively. Additionally, one-shot issues and miniseries were published over the years. Mirage also published a companion book entitled Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was designed to fill the gaps of the continuity in the TMNT universe. Image Comics, 1996 to 1999. In 96... Image Comics co-founder Eric Larson, seeing there was were no TMNT comics in active publication, oversaw a relaunch of the comics through Highbrow Productions. His studio at Image, with writing by Gary Carlson and art by Frank Fosco, this third volume of the main series intended as a continuation of the Mirage comics saw Splinter become a bat, Donatello a cyborg, Leonardo lose a hand, Raphael becomes scare, uh, scarred, and assume the identity of the new Shredder, uh, the new series was canceled in 1999 after 23 issues without a conclusion. In 2018, IDW began reprinting the series in full color as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, Urban Legends and commissioned Carlson and Fusco to create three additional issues to tie up the unfinished story. Archie Comics, 1988 to 1995. Archie Comics published Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures, a series aimed at a younger audience, initially adapting episodes of the first animated series. It soon moved uh, to original storylines. The main series ran for 72 issues. In addition, there were numerous annual specials, miniseries, and ongoing spinoff series, uh, Mighty Mutant uh, Mutant Animals, uh, features a team of supporting characters. Dreamway Productions, 2003. A monthly comic inspired by the 2003 TV series was published by Dreamway Productions from June to December 2003. It was written by Peter David and illustrated by LaShawn Thomas. In the first four issues, which were only ones direct uh, directly uh, adapted from the TV series, uh, the story was told from the perspective of April, uh, Baxter, Casey, and a pair of New York City police officers. IDW Publishing, 2011 to to, to now, present. In 2011, IDW published, uh, Publishing acquired a, the license to publish the new collection of Mirage Storylines and a new ongoing series. The first issue of the new series was released in August to, uh, 24th of that year. Uh, Turtles co-creator Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz wrote a book with Eastman and Dan Duncan providing art in 2017 
issue number 73 of the comic was published, making it the longest running comic series in the franchise history. In addition to the main series and spinoffs uh, set with its continuity, IDW also published comics based on the 2012 uh animated series and the 2018 animated series writers of the teenage mutant ninja turtles um so they also have manga the turtles have appeared in several manga series mutant turtles is a 15 issue series by oyamata zuki mora and uh, yoshimi yoshimi hamada and uh simply adapted episodes of the original american animated series super turtles is a three issue mini series by heidi mesa Aidi Mitsu and uh, Tetsumaro Kueda and uh, Toshio Kudo uh, that featured the TMNT Super Mutants turtle toys uh, that were on sale at the time. Uh, the first volume of the animated or uh, anime miniseries followed the storyline Mutant Turtles Gaiden by Hishiro Kano is a reinterpretation of the turtle story with no connection to the previous manga. Mutant Turtles 3 is Yashihiko uh, Hanuchio's uh, adaptation of the third feature film. Uh, Mutant Turtles 95 is a 95 series by Agata Nobu, which ran in comic Boom Boom. Mutant Turtles 96 is a continuation of the 95 series when it continued to run through 96 comic strip. Yeah, so a daily comic strip was written and illustrated by Dan Berger, uh, began in 1990. It featured an adventure story uh, Monday through Friday and activity puzzles on weekends with fans are appearing later. The uh, comic strip was published in uh, syndication until its conclusion, a cancellation in uh, December of 1996 at its uh, highest point in popularity. It was uh, published in more than 250 magazines. So some television series, uh, Debuting in uh, 1987, a five-part miniseries and becoming a regular Saturday morning syndicated series on October 1st, 1988. The first animated series follows the adventures of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and their allies as they battle uh, the Shredder, Krong, and numerous other villains and criminals in the New York City. The uh, property was uh, changed considerably more uh, from the darker tone comics to make it more suitable for for children and the families uh, produced by fred wolf films uh the series ran for 10 seasons and ended in 1996 um an original video animation in addition to the uh, the american series a, Jap- a japanese exclusive two episode anime original uh video animation or known as an ova series was made in 1996 entitled uh, Mutant Turtles, uh, Kojani, uh, D- Densky Hin. Uh, the OVA is, uh, similar to, in tone, to the 1987 TV series and uses the same voice, um, voices from the TV Tokyo's Japanese dub of the 1987 TV series. It features the turtles as superheroes that gain, uh, costumes and superpowers with the use of the um, Metastone, Mutant Stone, while uh, Shredder and Bebop and Rocksteady gain supervillain powers uh, with the use of the Dark uh, Metastone. A live-action series from 1997 to 1998, a 1997 to 1998, a live-action series, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Next Mutation, uh, aired on Fox. It introduced a female turtle, Venus de Milo, uh, skilled in the mystic arts of Shinbenu, Sh- uh, Shinobo. The, the next uh, mutation turtles made a guest appearance on uh, Power Rangers in space. The next mutants was canceled after one season of uh, 26 episodes. Second animated uh, series from 2003 Three to 2009. In 2003, a new TMNT series produced by Four Kids Entertainment began airing on the Fox box, later renamed Four Kids TV. A programming block. It later moved uh, to the uh, CW Four Kids block. The series was co-produced by Mirage Studios and um, 
Mirage owned one third of the rights to the series. Uh, Mirage's significant stake in creative control resulted in a cartoon that hues more closely to the original comics, creating a darker and mature tone than the 1987 cartoon. Though still considered appropriate for younger viewers, the series lasted until 2009. Ended a ended with actually a feature length television movie titled Turtles Forever, which was produced in a conjunction with their twenty fifth anniversary of the franchise. Third animated series, so from twenty twelve to twenty seventeen, Nickelodeon acquired uh, the global rights to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the Mirage Group and Four Kids Entertainment Incorporated, and announced a new CGI animated TMNT. Uh, television series. The 2012 version is characterized by anime-like iconology and emphasizes on mutagens continuing to wreak havoc on the early days uh, on everyday life, lives of the turtles and their enemies. In addition, the tone of this version is similar to the original series, but also features a handful of serious episodes as well. The series ran for five seasons and ended in uh, 2017. The fourth um, animated series from 2018 to 2020, Rise of the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, was the second Nickelodeon produced animated series in the franchise and uh, premiered in September of 2018. It returned to using 2D animation while using some anime, anime iconology and was characterized by its lighter humor. The series aired between 2018 to 2020 and was um, followed by an actual feature f- film release on Netflix in 2022. Uh, so the reboot series, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, August 8th, 2014. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows, June 3rd, 2016. Then we move on to some animated films. TMNT, uh, March 23rd, 2007. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, August 4th, 2023. The Turtles have starred in six theatrical feature films. The first three are live action features uh, produced in the early 90s. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 1990. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, 1991. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, 1993. Uh, the Turtles were played by various actors in costumes featuring animatronic heads, initially produced by Jim Henson's Creature Shop. The fourth film, a computer animated film titled Team NT, was released in 2007. A reboot, also titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, produced by Platinum Dunes, Nickelodeon Movies, and Paramount Pictures, was released in 2014. A sequel titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows was released in 2016. A computer animated reboot titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is set to be released in 2023. So that's something exciting to be looking forward Mm to. Um, Some merchandise. The franchise generated merchandise sales of $175 million in 88 and $350 million in 89. By May 1990, it had generated $650 million in domestic retail revenue. In 94, it was the most merchandisable franchise, having generated a total revenue of $6 billion, or equivalent to $11 billion in now, uh, in merchandise sales up until then. Toys. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles action figures during the run of the 87 TV series, Playmates Toys produced hundreds of TMNT action figures, along with vehicles, play sets, and accessories, becoming one of the top collectibles for children. Staff artists at Northampton, Massachusetts-based Mirage Studios provided conceptual designs for many of the figures, vehicles, and play sets, and creator credit can be found in the legal text printed on the back of the toy packaging. In addition, Playmates produced a series of TMNT slash Star Trek crossover figures due to playmates holding star trek action figure license at the time playmates employed many design groups developed uh looks and styles for the toy line including boom design white design pangea robinson clark and mikhail design the marketing vice president of playmates carl ariani uh Uh, was largely responsible for assembling the talent team of designers and writers, which in turn helped germinate continued interest in the toy line. Never before in toy history did an action figure line have such an impact for over two decades, generating billions of dollars licensing revenue 
The series was highly popular in the UK, where in the run-up to Christmas, the Army and Navy store in London's Lewisham devoted its entire basement to an everything turtles, including videos, costumes, and other items. Playmates continued to produce TMNT action figures based on the 2003 animated series. The 2007 uh, film TMNT also gave Playmates a new source for the, which to make figures, while... National Entertainment Collectibles Association produced a series of high-quality action figures based on the characters designed from the original Mirage comics. In 2012, a new toy line and new classic toy line from Playmates were also to be released. Yeah, so we're going to move on to video games now. Um, so a uh, number of uh, TMNT uh, video games had been produced, uh, mostly by Konami. Uh, the first console video game based on the franchise, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, was released uh, for the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, or the NES, um, under Konami's Ultra Games uh, label in uh, 1989, and later ported uh, to home computer and eventually to the Wii on uh, the Virtual Console. Also um, released by Konami in 1989 was an arcade game, also titled simply Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Later ports up to the NES as uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game uh, leading to the NES-only sequel. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, uh, the, the Mad Hatton project, was with play, uh, gameplay taken from the arcade game as opposite to the first NES game. The next Turtle games, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time was uh, released in 1991 as an arcade game and was later ported to the Super Nintendo Entertainment Systems or Super uh, NES uh, in 1992. Titled um, Mutant Ninja Turtles 4 Turtles in Time with a sequel n uh, numbering to the NES titles appended. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, the Hyperstone Heist was also created for the Sega Genesis in the same year and used many of the art assets from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4. There's also a, a trilogy of TMNT uh, video games for the original Game Boy system made by Konami, consisting of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Fall of the Foot Clan, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Back from the Sewers, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, uh, Radical Rescue, a uh, PC exclusive game, Teenage Mutant, Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Manhattan Mission was um, also released. Konami's last entry during the original run were Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Tournament Fighters, a set of one-on-one -on -one, um, fighting games released for the NES, SNES, and Genesis. Each version is wholly uh, distinct games um, sharing only the title and uh, genre in common. In September of 2002, Konami also acquired the license to adapt the 2003 TV series into a video game franchise, resulting in a new series of games with 3D gameplay inspired by the old TMNT uh, beat em up games consisting of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 2003 video game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, uh, Battle Nexus, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Mutant Nightmare, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Melee. In uh, 2006, Ubisoft acquired the rights for TMNT games, beginning with a game based on the 2007 anime feature film, along with a uh, distinct uh, game for the Game Boy Advance, similar in style to Konami's arcade games. A beat em up game, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade Attack, was released for the Nintendo DS in 2009 to coincide with the series' 25th anniversary. In uh, 2013, Activision released uh, the downloadable game Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of Shadows, based on the 2012 TV series and developed by Red Fly Studios for the Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation Network, and Steam. In 2016, Activision and Platinum Games developed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Mutants in Manhattan for 
the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 3, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and the PC. The game is described as a third-person uh, team-based brawler. The campaign is playable either single-player or co-op. It has the original story is written by Tim Waltz, IDW's uh, comic uh, writer and editor. The uh, art style is based on a the long run time the on long time M T M N T comic artist um Matsio uh Santo Los. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Legends, a free-to-play role-playing video game, was released by Ludia in summer of 2016 for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Kindle Fire. is based on the 2012 TV series. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle appear as playable characters in DC fighting game Injustice 2 as part of the Fight Pack 3 DLC. And Corey Kruger, Joe Berge, uh, Ben Rausch, and Ryan Cooper voicing their roles. Leonardo, Michelangelo, April O'Neil, and Shredder appear as playable characters in the 2021 platform fighting game Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl, with Clark, uh, Cam Clark, Townsend Coleman, and Jim Cunnings reprising their roles from the 1987 animated series, while Abby Trot voices uh, the role as part of the June 2022 update of the game. All four of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles also appeared as playable characters in the fighting game Brawlhalla. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge you beat him up with all four Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. April Splinter and Casey Jones as playable characters was released in June 2022. It was inspired by the 1987 Turtles animated series and borrows uh, stylistically from the arcade and home console games developed by Konami during the 80s and 90s. In some other media, Tabletop role-playing games. In 1985, Palladium Books published Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other uh, st strangeness. Uh, it is a standalone game, uh, but uses many key mechanics from Palladium's Megaversal system and is compatible with material from other Palladium games. It introduced uh, rules for creating anthropomorphic animals. Uh, examples of mutants are included in the appendices as potential antagonists, including terror bears, uh, Caesars, weasels, and sparrows, eagles, uh, as well as including stats for the turtles and other characters. A series of supplements were released over the next few years, which remained in print due to the cost of maintaining the license. Palladium decided to end the license with Mirage Studios in 2000. Uh, some food tie-ins, which this should be no surprise. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles food tie-ins. During the height of their popularity, the Turtles had a number of food tie-ins. Among the most notable of these products was Ninja Turtle cereals produced by Ralston Purina as kind of a Chex Mix with TMNT-themed marshmallows. With cereal featured uh, many different inbox premiums during its uh, production run. Ralston also produced Pizza Cruncho Bungas, uh, which were pizza-flavored corn snacks in the shape of whole circular pizzas. The commercial starred with the Ninja Turtles as Will Viviton, uh, Vinton uh, created Claymations, Hostess Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pies featuring a crust covered with a green glaze and vanilla pudding inside. Each pie came with either one of five yellow stickers with an illustration of one of the turtles on it or five different TMNT two secret of the ooze trading cards inside. There was also a, uh, four, uh, TMNT, uh, mail away items available to order from hostess and Royal ooze, uh, gluten, uh, desserts or gelatin desserts. Uh, distributed by, uh, Nabsco under uh, Royal gelatin in three different flavors, orange, strawberry, and lime. Uh, Shriddles was a uh, Canadian cereal with TMNT themed box art and promos. One example of a TMNT uh, prize was rings featuring uh, characters from the cartoon 1992. Chef Boyardee um, also released a canned pasta with uh, the pastas in the shapes of the four turtles. There were multiple versions of the pasta released, uh, including one with Shredder added in to the shapes. Uh, customers could mail away with a uh, way for an exclusive shredder action figure that was darker than the standard playmates figures. It was uh, shipped in a plastic baggie. This shredder is one of the more valuable T and T M and T uh, action figures today. Concert tours uh, to capitalize on the turtles 
popularity, a concert tour was held in 1990, premiering at Radio City Hall on August 17th. The Coming Out of, the Sh- of Their Shells tour featured live-action turtles playing music as a band. So, uh, for example, Donatello was on keyboards, Leonardo was on bass guitar, uh, Raphael was drums and saxophone, and Michelangelo on guitar. On stage, around a familiar plot line, April O'Neil is kidnapped by Shredder, and the and the turtles have to rescue her. The story had a very Bill and Ted esque kind of feel, with its themes of a power of rock and roll literally defeating the enemy, in the form of Shredder, who only only rapped about how he hates music. I I gotta hear I gotta hear Shredder rap. Uh, trying to uh, eliminate all music. Pay-per-view uh, special highlighting the concert was shown, and a studio album was also released. The tour was sponsored by Pizza Hut, thus many um, references are made to their pizzas. Um, empty empty Pizza Hut boxes are actually seen on on screen in the behind the scenes or behind the shelves uh, VHS as part of a cross market strategy pizza hut uh, restaurants gave away posters audio cassettes of coming out of the shells and official tour guides as premiums uh the first show of the tour was released on video with a making of video also released the song pizza power was later used in konami for the second arcade game teenage mutant ninja turtles the turtles in time cam clark and peter uh Renade uh, reprised their roles as Leonardo and Splinter uh, during the spoken portions of the concert's uh, kickaway event in Radio City Hall Music Hall, uh, though they were went uncredited in the event's VHS release. That's crazy. Um, roller coasters and amusement rides um, are big, apparently, because you know Nickelodeon's got a big one, and Nickelodeon Universal. At uh, American Dream um, Meadowlands in Eastern Rutherford in in New Jersey, which opened in 2019, contains several TMNT uh, themed rides, uh, including two coasters that broke ro- uh, world records upon their opening. The TMNT uh, Shell Razor, a Eurofighter, is uh, the steepest roller coaster in the world at 121.5 degrees. The Shredder is a spinning roller coaster theme to the uh, Shredder is the world's longest free spinning coaster uh, where riders can spin uh, the car freely along the track with a length of 1,322 feet and a maximum length of 62 feet, I mean a maximum height of 62 feet. Uh, Nickelodeon Universal um, at Amer- at the Mall of America in Bloomington, um, Minnesota, also contains ride themes to the MT, the uh, TMNT franchise. These include Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Shell Shock, a roller a roller coaster that opened in 2012, and Shredder's Mutant Mashers, um, a pendulum ride that opened in 2015. So. We're going to actually just do a little bit of uh, the actual live action movies. Um, so uh, the original TMNT movie uh, in 1990, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was released theatrically in the United States on March 30th, 1990 by New Line Cinema. It re- received mixed reviews, but was a box office success, grossing $302 million off a budget of $13.5 million. It was the highest grossing independent film at the time and the ninth of grossing film worldwide in 1990 and we're going to give you some kind of uh fun facts about this one of the street punks tells the police chief to check out the east warehouse on lairdman's island this was actually a tribute to kevin eastman and peter lard uh the creators of tmnt ernie reyes jr who played kino in the second movie was the martial artist double for donatello in the uh, in the Foots warehouse by the skate ramp, if you look closely, there's a box next to it labeled Archie Comics. At the time of this movie, the TMNT Adventures comics were produced by Archie. Most people know April O'Neil, but 
as a joke, the movie in the movie, two other reporters are also named after months, June and May. Uh, the movie Raphael comes from having seen and is critters. That movie like TMNT was made and distributed by new line cinema. Yeah. So with that success, there was a course followed uh, teenage mutant Ninja turtles Two, the secret of the ooze in 1991. The film was released theatrically in the United States on March 22nd, 1991 by new line cinema received mixed reviews from the critics who uh, felt it departed from a much from the much darker tone of the original 1990. However, it was uh, financially successful, grossing a uh, $78.7 million uh, against its $20 million budget, uh, becoming the 13th um, highest grossing film domestically in the year of its release. The film is dedicated to Jim Henson, who uh, died just less than a year before the film's release. Henson's uh, you know, Creature Shop created the animatronics um, creatures and costumes for the film just like the first one. Uh, some facts about it. Um, well, the actors responsible for all of the uh, Turtles voices have actual cameos in the movie, except for Raphael's. Uh, Michael Pressman, the director, also plays uh, the news uh, manager in the scene where April tells her boss that she is following up on the TGRI. This occurs at about 37 minutes and five seconds. The man who is a super shredder is a uh, Shredder costume is actually Kevin Nash, better known as Big Sexy or Diesel from WWE, WWF. And this is about one hour, 17 minutes, 35 minutes into the movie. Uh, Judas Ho uh, Hogue played April in the first one, but was replaced by Paige uh, Torco in the sequels. According to Hogue, uh, the uh, producers were never called her about uh, appearing in the sequels, though she believed that it may have been been her fault she had very hard time on the first film due to the hectic schedule and also uh also took issues with the costume design and the amount of violence in the film despite it being aimed at children she believed this creative differences are why she was never recasted uh so teenage mutant ninja turtles 3 1993. The film was released theatrically in the United States on March 19th, 1993 by New Line Cinema. It received mostly negative reviews with a general consensus from the critics that it, you know, the film didn't feature any of the villains or any of the storylines. From the original Mirage comics or the 87 animated series, it received moderate box office success, grossing $54 million against a budget of $21 million, making it the lowest rated entry in the series. An animated film TMNT was released in 2007, which makes reference to the prior live action films. The film series was completely rebooted in 2014, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles following the acquisition of the franchise by Viacom. So, some Facts and mistakes about this movie. Uh, the first one being obvious. Making, make, a, yeah, making, making of the film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so two, you know, just and one after that. Starting this film, all effects company took over for the, and worked on the animatronic effects for the turtles and Splinter costume. Jim Henson's Creature Shop was the company who had worked on the mutant creatures in the previous two films. Producers invited Corey Feldman to reprise his role from the first film as Donatello. The filmmakers told Corey they felt bad about not casting him for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. However, when Corey asked for more money, they told that or money than the $1,500 he was paid on the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1990 film. Uh, Corey was told, yeah, but you were in rehab. Corey was denied the raise and was again paid only $1,500. Hmm. At one point, the movie... One of the turtles refer to Walker Stuart Wilson as Zorro Dude. Wilson later starred in The Mask of Zorro in 1998 as Zorro's arch nemesis, Don Rafael Montero. Um, in the original comics, uh, the Time Scepter is normally associated with Renette, the Timestress, uh, apprentice of the Lord Simultaneous. She often encounters uh, Savanti Romero. None of these characters appear in this film. Hmm. And I, th that's pretty much it for this. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's a big. Uh, it was a big cover. Um, this is a huge franchise. I don't yeah, it's, like. I think, mean, I knew there was a lot, but I, I think didn't, we covered everything, though. I yeah. feel like at least touched on. We touched everything. merchandise, comics, movies. Yeah, literally touched franchise. We literally just touched. There you go. Like, literally touched everything. It. 
We just I'm touched wearing it. wearing it right now. He's wearing it. He's, he's, he's in that ooze. That's right. Um, yeah, so f- I guess this is the part where we typically discuss our uh, feelings about, about the movies because it's more supposed to be about, our, about the movies, but we wanted to n- not take away from anything. So, um, yeah, uh, first one's a classic. Oh, easily. I think um, the one I've seen the most, I've seen the first one so many times. Uh, second one was okay, I guess. Like, and uh, third one was okay, I guess. Like so, so I would rate, I would rate the first movie as. And we're talking about the original, so so everybody's aware. We're not talking about the new, the new, uh, the, re- the, the new the ones, the animatronic can, ones, yeah. not these CGI ones. Um, probably I would give the first one a six. Second one, uh, probably about a five, and then um, third one, a four. Hmm. What, what were you at on on these? Well, like you said, the first one's a classic. I give that yeah. one; it gets an easy eight, eight or nine. Yeah. Uh, the second one, I'm not too far off on you from that one, like a six or a seven. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It does get a little bit more like uh, goofy. Yeah. And then the third one, it, it's a five all day i mean it just got it got too goofy and i think that's what they were talking about in some of these uh with lard and um eastman uh that they just kind of got away from because the original comics they killed people and, oh yeah yeah and they the were original bloody was and crazy swore and yeah and then like you got you know the old tv show and it got crazy in that and kind of goofy and it was very for also it wasn't mentioned but just so everybody knows in fact the ooze it's actually the same ooze that blinds daredevil yeah uh just so everybody is aware. So we were, made mention of it slightly, but it was yeah. like, but no, kind of dance. It, it is a direct, it is a direct correlation to uh, what happens in Daredevil. So it's just you never find out what happened to the ooze, and it would have been hilarious if they made the Daredevil show, which yeah, was okay. phenomenal. <laughs> just it just strips it to the sewer, and we just never see what happened. That would have been hilarious, but it never did. But um. <clears throat> Yeah, me and Ninja Turtles. I mean, it's it's a. I I love. I do love the franchise. I I love the idea. Um. I. They're still making stuff today. It's just to show like how valuable of a, uh, you know, concept it is. Like, it just. I mean, it sucks that you know the the artist. Uh, who was it? The main. Uh, well, Lard Lard left. They uh, both did. Laird laid layer left pretty 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 late in the game he he stuck he stuck with it the longest and he had finally just like left but man it's we were just talking about this off camera like like how do you how do you, how are you an artist and you have something like this like what do you like what do you do like how do you like how do you deal with that that's crazy like and he 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 had control over it surprisingly enough like like look at Stan Lee. Stan Lee didn't have control over his stuff. Like, that's it's notorious. You know what I mean? Okay. So, but yeah, I think that's um. I think, but that concludes my review of it. Uh, I think that that yeah, concludes I'm, you too. I'm good. Any more? No, no additional thoughts. Um, again, thank you for those that stayed through it all. Um, appreciate you. Love you. Again, like, subscribe, ring that ring that bell to to know that uh you know to know when we do post. And um, share, tell tell people about us if you like what we are doing or like what like how we sound or like how the information we give you. So, all right. But yeah, I think that concludes it for today. Till next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye.